Now, uh, single displacement. You just got the activity series passed out to you. I'll explain it in a second. Uh, for right now, though, let's look at a, a, a obvious single displacement reaction. We're going to say we've got potassium plus iron chloride. So there's our basic reaction. You should be able to recognize it as a single displacement reaction. Stop talking. Now, you recognize it as a single displacement without me having told you that it's single displacement. You should be able to just tell one element reacting with an ionic compound, it's obviously single displacement. Now, the first thing that I recommend you do here, okay, the first thing you do is go through and identify what the charges are on every single compound here, an element. So, potassium's charge is what? It's positive, it's actually plus one if you look it up. Iron's charge is actually plus two in this case due to the fact that chlorine is negative one and you have two of them, so iron's gotta be positive two. So it depends on the number of For for this for iron it does, yeah. Now we've identified that. Here's what we're gonna do. Like charges switch places in single displacement reactions. So I actually want you to write that down. Okay? Let's write that. Like charges. That's how you got CL2. Pardon? That's how you got CL2. Yeah. So as an example, so you don't get confused and that's a negative. So like, like charges will switch. So positive switches with positive, negative, switches with negative. So, it's a simple thing to remember, but it's an important thing to remember. They, will, they are the ones that will trade places, and you determine it based on what their charges are. Now, there's a bunch of ways to figure out charge. Remember what their ionic charges are. You remember that in, a, in any ionic formula that's written, the cation is always written first, the positive ion is always written first in a formula, so you always know the first thing's positive. Uh, so, based on that, the two things that would switch places here would be potassium and iron. Because they're both positive. Now, notice that it's not, it, one's positive one, one's positive two, that doesn't matter, it's just like charges, they're both positive. So it doesn't matter if one's like plus 100 and the other's plus 1,000? No. Now, what you do need to do, though, is look at something called the activity series. Now, if you look at this activity series that was given to you, uh, that matters a lot in doing this. The activity series, in a simplified version, tells you how reactive something is. So if you look here, the most reactive thing we have on this chart is lithium. The least reactive thing is gold. What? Their dashes that they are. That's from last last hour. Now, uh, what this tells us is that certain things react more than other things. When you have things coming into contact, stop talking. Last time I'm going to ask you about. Now, when you have certain things coming into contact with each other, like let's say we have lithium and potassium reacting, or actually, why don't we just look at our reaction? which is potassium and iron. Which is higher up on our chart? Potassium. Potassium's up here, iron's way down here. So what that tells us is that potassium is more reactive. It sort of works like this. Iron's bonded to chlorine, they're kind of walking down the street, and potassium shows up and says, hey, iron, go away. And it depends then entirely on how high up on the chart both things are. Potassium is more reactive. It will replace iron. If iron was higher up on the chart than potassium, nothing would happen. Iron would say to potassium, no, go away, and uh, just keep on going. So what that means is this. The chart tells you the reaction takes place. 
you actually probably are going to hope that reactions don't take place because then you can just write NR, no reaction, you're done with the problem. It's a lot easier. What? Instead of using the chart, can't you just know if they're both positive and switch? No, I'm telling you, even if they're both positive, but the thing by itself is lower on the chart, nothing will switch. And I'm going to do an example of that too. So for now, though, we know that potassium's higher up, something will switch. So our result will be we will have potassium bonded to chlorine and then iron is just sort of kicked out, left all on its own there. No, it doesn't matter at all if it's you write iron first, it doesn't make any difference. Because what occurs, K and Fe traded places. They don't bond, they switch. K had another, uh, well, K was a compound, and it was, it was a negative, and K, uh, one with K was switch to CL. Yeah. So, now, did I write this correctly? Well, potassium's plus one, chlorine's minus one, so that's good, and iron doesn't matter right now. The only thing you got to do is go back and balance it, so I would put a two here, and then put a two there. Now it's balanced. And we're going to do more examples now, so... So now why don't we do a really quick one where there is a no, where no reaction takes place. All right, so let's do... Uh, is it going to be with single displacement? Yeah, I'm doing all single displacement right now. So let's say we've got calcium plus barium uh, fluoride. So there's a reaction for you, calcium plus barium fluoride. Now, if you go through and identify everything, CAs plus two bariums plus two fluorines minus one. And you're left and you have to think. Now, I look at the chart, we're gonna be comparing barium and calcium again. Which one is higher up in this case? Barium is up here, calcium is right there. So barium is actually higher. That means you write NR. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of them actually don't react. Because what that is telling us is this: calcium is going to is going to go up to this re, is going to go up to this compound, and it's going to try to react. But in reality, barium is more active. It reacts quicker, more energetically, and it prevents calcium from bonding. This is this is sort of like calcium is sort of like a home wrecker here. We have a compound. And calcium is trying to break up this compound. Calcium's trying to break it up. And if calcium is able to do that, if it is more energetic, then it can break up the compound. But if barium is more energetic, it will shoo calcium away and it will not occur then. If that kind of puts it into better perspective for you. What? So if it's metal, if it's a metal and a non metal, then it's a non Nope, that, that is not, we're just looking at where it is on the chart. So I would write this down too. Can you do one more with So if the element by itself is higher up on the activity series, a reaction takes place. If not, you just write NR, no reaction. So, potassium is higher than iron. That's why it occurred. Potassium is by itself, and iron is lower. Barium is higher than calcium. That's, that's it. So that's why no reaction took place. You see how calcium is by itself. We're saying that it, the one that's by itself has to be higher. Every time. Otherwise, no reaction occurs. 
So, you've got that. Let's look at another one now. Uh, why don't we do this? Let's say we have sort of an opposite thing where we've got ZnCl2 plus. Now, this is a little bit different. Now we're looking at halogen. We're looking at, we're looking at a negative, uh, you know, a halogen replacement as opposed to two positive ions. So you've got zinc is plus two, chlorine's minus one, bromine's minus one. Is this the All single displacement. So you look here. Now like charges switch, so you're going to be comparing chlorine and bromine. And you know, looking at your activity series. So you look here, which one's higher up in this case on our nonmetal side? Chlorine's higher up, so is the reaction going to take place? So no reaction takes place due to chlorine being higher on the activity series. Doesn't happen though. No. Now, let me show you one more. Then we'll move on to double displacement reactions. All right, last one. Why don't we do this? So, let's do this one. Magnesium plus hydrochloric acid. Go through and identify that magnesium is plus two. Hydrogen is plus one, chlorine is negative one. It's it just the charges are all that you're going to look at, okay, Ali? Now, you look here, you compare. You're comparing hydrogen and magnesium. So look on your chart. Magnesium is much higher then hydrogen. So a reaction will take place. Yeah, it is the non-metal, but it's positive, so it's listed on the side with the metals. Now, the reaction that occurs, you end up with Mg bonding to Cl, but you look, it's going to be actually MgCl2 due to the fact that chlorine is negative 1, Mg is 2. As a reminder, you know, Mg is plus 2, chlorine is minus 1. So you would switch those charges, and that's where you would get that. And then, yes, when you write hydrogen, it's got to be H2 because it's diatomic. Yeah. Go ahead. It is. They're both positive, so that's why it switched. Oh, it doesn't matter the number. No. What? I'm not done yet, that's why. So, now you go and balance things. You have Cl2, you have H2, so you just put a 2 there. Everything is balanced then. Is that what you were asking me? Yeah. Yes, Leal. Why did you put Cl2? Because Mg is. Thank you, Ali. So, that's that's single displacement. It's that's it.